a warm morning in Sam Reap, and it's ride day. We hit up Pub Street for New Year's Eve celebrations, visited the huge temples of Angkor, and now we're ready to ride some dirt bikes. The journey will take us 900 kilometres down the western side of Cambodia through the Cardamom Mountains, from Siem Reap to Sihanoukville on the southern coast. There's five Aussie riders on this trip, along with a Cambodian support crew from Ride Expeditions. Our tour leader Voigt gave us a detailed rider briefing yesterday, which I've forgotten most of already, but I do remember to ride on the right hand side of the road. This takes some getting used to as we make our way north to the temple region just outside of the city. We ride through the grounds of a Buddhist pagoda and on towards an ancient man-made reservoir. As we hit the dirt the trails are dusty and hard packed. This gives us a chance to familiarise ourselves with the suspension and the available traction. season in January and while it's one of the cooler months of the year the temperatures are still in the low 30s. The heat isn't too bad when you're moving along at speed but when you slow down or get amongst the trees you really feel the heat in all this gear. Stop in a small village and watch a family trap some fish while some future enduro riders are pretty interested in our bikes. Darren grabs some ripper photos and we head back onto the trail. We wave goodbye and ride off through the village. This would mark the first of many waves, high fives and engine revs throughout this trip, greeting enthusiastic kids keen to see the big loud dirt bikes. You just can't leave them hanging. As we get deeper into the countryside we start to see more walk behind tractors. These two wheel beasts are all over Cambodia as labour shortages are increasing the need for mechanisation. Refueling, I noticed this guy sitting behind a massive wooden desk, barking orders and counting a huge wad of American dollars. If I ever become a manager, I want to be this guy. We're back onto the highway for a short section, and then we catch up with a support vehicle for lunch. become the busiest of our whole trip. It seemingly went on forever as we weaved our way through the traffic. We even put a few dodgy passes on the inside. It was low speed, but a bit sketchy. introduced to the beer kitty and the phone system. Darren later asked Foot to explain how it works. It's, a, it's a fun for the rider when they fall down and the bar touch the ground. Yeah. Five bucks. Five bucks? Yeah. And, and, and what happens to the five dollars? Yeah, that money we go to the kitty, we pay to the beer. The stakes have been raised. We 
ride through the leafy suburbs of Badenbong, past rice laying out to dry and we idle through the aftermath of what looked like a ripper party. We pull into our hotel and Foot goes to buy us some beer. Today was a 185 km introduction to riding in Cambodia. Not too bad. Our day two adventure begins with a bizarrely thick black coffee that just couldn't be watered down and I find that Chris has written me a nice compliment. We gear up and hit peak hour bat and bong. I'm starting to really gel with the KLX and getting a good feel for riding in laid back Cambodian traffic, especially after yesterday's hectic roads. Today we're riding 220 kilometres from Battambang to Oosum. Cross the river, eat some tasty street food from a vendor and then head back onto the trails. Transport to the next section, Matt does some cool tricks, Chris shows us his race pace, and then we hit some boggy, low-lying land and rice paddies. We backtracked a fair bit here, and Voot later told us that the trail had changed a fair bit since wet season. Kangaroos and stuff popping out, but mm. not yeah. fucking all out of cows. <laughs> <laughs> when taking a short break, we discover Chris's bike has developed an oil leak. The exhaust is rubbing on your oil line. Ah, yeah. I see. Chris, why did this happen to you? And why do you deserve it? <laughs> because I'm hard on the gear and I'm the fastest one here by a country mile. By patching the leak with some rubber bands and bush mechanics, Chris's bike is back up and running with the pipe to be welded up later in the day. For now, he'll continue being the fastest one here. We pull into T-Town to fuel up and learn that Glenn's bike has had an electrical problem and won't start. Foot and Look strip the bike down while we enjoy some tasty pork and rice for lunch, while Darren grabs a few photos. Unable to fix the dead bike on the roadside, they make the decision to tow it along the next 50 kilometre stretch of rutted remote roads till we can meet up again with a support vehicle. Hey buddy, Stuff. have a good time.
Matt does some sweet doughies after 50 kilometres of sharp edged potholes, sketchy ruts and river crossings. We finally arrive at the support vehicle. Chris's bike disappears to have the oil pipe bronze welded and the spare bike comes off the trailer for Glenn. Without too much pause, we're off again. These freshly graded roads were great fun, but occasionally you come over the crest of a hill a little bit too quick and suddenly you're on top of a bridge, just hoping it holds together. We head down to the lake to check out the scenery, and then back up to the road and onwards. Chris and I are setting a cracking pace on some pretty smooth roads with only the odd dodgy bridge or sudden nasty pothole to navigate. After about 25 minutes, strangely enough we still can't catch up to the pack, but we're having a blast anyway so it doesn't really matter. As we see the next village in the distance, Chris does a triumphant wheelie, and then our lead rider Voigt overtakes us. Wait, what? So where are we in front? Not right. We retrace our steps and discover it was our lead rider Voigt back on the corner, not the sweep. We'd really been leading our own tour for the last half hour. We both kicked $10 in beer fines into the kitty, fair enough. The other boys soon arrive and we learn Glenn lost his muffler just a bit earlier on the road. The guest house serves up some amazing Khmer food including a delicious wild boar curry and as is customary, we drink some more beer. Day two really should have ended in disaster with various bike issues to overcome, a cow stampede and a catastrophic failure in the corner man system. Despite these setbacks, the support crew expertly held it together, kept us moving and got us to our destination in good time. Hats off to the crew for all their hard work on day two. Had a rough sleep due to a stupid rooster and a huge pack of howling dogs at around 2am but we set off for a decent breakfast at a local cafe while the lads perform routine bike maintenance and refuelling. We leave the village of Ursum travelling through banana plantations and pepper farms and heading towards the Tiger Trail. Wood told us big cats are still rumoured to live in this forest though poaching and habitat loss has mostly eliminated Indo-Chinese tigers from much of Cambodia. This trail is awesome. Conditions are excellent, so we're moving along nicely, well, until I became the first to bin it. I do that. Thanks, looks. Yep, five bucks, mate. Would suggest that since we're a quick group, we slow it down and explore a little. For another hour, we pushed our way through overgrown trails, dropping bikes, and sweating like crazy from the humid rainforest. Five dollars. We finally decided to turn around before we get lost and hightail it out of there. Through an old quarry we stop at a waterfall. It wasn't flowing too hard in January after a dry spell but it was a nice spot for a break and a group photo. We leave the quarry again and we head for a nice shady spot for lunch and to watch some cute animal <laughs> blood sport. Probably go well on YouTube, better than yeah. dirt bike riding. Yeah. We finish lunch and we're back into the forest again. This section of trail is a bit faster, but low hanging vines conspire to remove us from our bikes as we push through down into a river crossing.
looks to get stuck on the rocks, so I'll help him out. Come hand. Sweep knee deep in water. I reckon that's worth five bucks. We exit the Tiger Trail onto a dusty red road. We ride this for a good half hour and then onto some smooth concrete that went forever, leading us up to a recently built hydro dam. China is investing heavily in infrastructure projects like this right across Cambodia. We find some shade and I decide to conduct an interview with the boys. Any of you blokes got any comments? Still rolling. Still rolling. They must be tired. And oh, action. <laughs> I got nothing. Guess they were worn out from the Tiger Trail. Another 50 kilometers of windy Chinese concrete roads and we arrive on the outskirts of Koh Kong. We pull into our hotel, have beers on the waterfront and then we're off to a French restaurant for dinner. Another superb day on our trip and tomorrow we rest. Today is a rest day. Wood gives us the option to go on a fishing trip, but after intense debate with Matt, we weigh up the options and decide to visit a local beach. Starting with a late breakfast, we wander around the streets of Koh Kong. We visit a wet market, Darren grabs a few great pics of local merchants selling fresh food. Back to the hotel, we pop on helmets and we're ready to ride dirt bikes. We ride across the two kilometre long Koh Kong Bridge and then head 10 minutes towards the Thai Cambodian border. We stand in no man's land and throw our helmets up for some reason, and then we're back on our bikes for a short ride to the beach. Beautiful shady spot on the water, we enjoy a huge seafood lunch at the Crab Shack. Unexpectedly, Voot leads our dirt bike convoy right out to the tip of a floating village. It was an interesting mix of poor and wealthy houses here, but they all had electricity, and as always, the kids were keen to see the visitors on the big bikes. Leaving the floating village, we head back through another Buddhist pagoda, back across the bridge and through Koh Kong City. We walk through the humid mangroves. Darren tests the structural integrity of the footbridge. <laughs> and then we climb a small tower that looks out across the sanctuary. Spinning. <laughs> Smoking. Cheers. 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 Cheers, boys. Come on board, Chris. <laughs> Cambodian. First sign of rain for the whole trip. It poured quite heavily as we prepare for a big day on the bikes. Is that what you'd call uh, manager's hands? Yeah. <laughs> so, is that upper management or middle management hands? <laughs> Wood tells us this will be the toughest day of riding for the whole trip, and while I'm excited, I'm a bit apprehensive of the sweaty humidity from all this rain. We head half an hour east from Koh Kong and cross the bridge at Tatai. Another 45 minutes on and we must refuel as it's the last chance we'll get before we enter the jungle. As Luxury refuels our bikes, Chris attempts a clever stitch up for some beer money. You put the handlebar down. Oh, bike? Yeah, I think you put down. No, we didn't. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> then 10 bucks. No, 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 no. Back
Back on the road we head a good half hour southeast and then drop down to a wide river crossing. This marks the start of the smugglers trail. and we hit the most slippery shiny wet red clay. It was crazy sketchy and the group contributed about $20 in beer fines for dropping bikes. It was nuts. The Smuggler's Trail was my favourite and the toughest we'd ridden so far. Not because of the terrain, but the stifling humidity really wore you down. Having to duck under low hanging trees and weird spiky vines burned a lot of energy and I don't think I've ever sweat so much in my life. A lot of the overhanging bamboo had been trimmed into nice pointy spears as well so you had to watch out for that. Chris even found a big poo. We also passed some riders that seemed under equipped with little protective gear. I hope they got through okay. We cross over a bridge and pull over to pay a toll guy. This bloke charges 50 cents for motorcycles to pass and 25 cents for bicycles. Foot said this business has made him pretty wealthy and to be fair his bridges were in excellent condition. Accommodation this evening is in the small eco village of Chipat. The guest house was clean and comfortable, if not very rustic. The scoop shower was pretty interesting. We enjoyed dinner and then Chris decides to hit the hay early. Oh, Chris said, <laughs> Chris said uh, I'm out to bed. I'm thinking, <laughs> nah. 15 more minutes. 6.58, you and go to bed. 
Voot is having none of this and orders up some local rice wine. Moi, be, bay, go. Go! Pretty soon one shot becomes ten. Some German travellers hear us and join us for a few rounds. We eventually run out of rice wine, so Chris decides to shot beer. Boy, be my fucking pack. So much for an early night's sleep. There's a few sore heads this morning as we make our way to breakfast. What have we got, boys? Apparently this is milk <laughs> for the coffee. Oh, yeah. Bid farewell to our German drinking buddy and we head down to the river to catch a ferry. It's our last leg of the journey and we'll be riding 160 kilometers from Chapat to Sienokville. Part of the country, if you want to mark your property boundary, you dig a giant trench. It's an effective deterrent, and some of them were so deep they are unrideable. We got through most though. Someone asked me why we decided to do a Cambodian tour. I think most dirt bike riders are always up for a bit of adventure, even under the safety of a western friendly tour operator. While this tour didn't focus on Cambodia's difficult past, and despite impressive reductions in poverty since 2004, Cambodia is still a very poor country. But the people are super friendly, the culture is interesting, the food is great, and the riding is just awesome. And unsurprisingly, if you end up travelling with a bunch of like-minded mates, you're going to have an amazing time. It was a public holiday today, so these waterfalls were packed with locals. Very popular spot. I'm not actually sure if we're allowed to ride dirt bikes in all of these public spaces, but no one seemed to care. Doubt mono out. Here 
Here we are, famous tourist beach town of Sihanoukville. We made it, 900 kilometers of Cambodia on bikes. What an incredible tour. Big thanks to Matt, Glenn, Darren, Chris, as well as Voot and the Ride Expeditions crew. Bloody superb trip and I reckon I'll be back soon. <laughs>